Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another review. And as you can see, today we're taking a look at the Hornby Sentinel. Now, as I did a review of the Ruston last year, I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at another small diesel from Hornby, even if this model is a few years old now. So, getting right into it, as you can see, this is a really charming little diesel, but it has to be said, it is quite basic. As far as I'm aware, the entire body shell is made of plastic, so you don't get any of that nice metal bodywork that we've come to expect with Hornby's more recent small industrial locos. There are a few areas where it feels a bit flimsy and delicate in places too. Uh, most noticeably these areas on the side are very thin plastic and they do bend quite a lot. I'm always a little bit worried whenever I pick this up that I'm accidentally going to break them. Uh, moving on to the livery, it's fairly simple on this particular model but Hornby have done a wide variation of Sentinels in all different colours so if you want something that's a bit more interesting or stands out a bit more then there's plenty to choose from. I quite like the plain red though which is obviously why I went for this one and there's also a little bit of texture around the step area too which is nice. Uh, on the side you can see that we have nicely printed nameplates as well as this little powered by Rolls-Royce marking just up here and then we also have the Sentinel logo further along and all of these are printed really really well and are really nice and sharp. On the front of the loco, although to be honest I'm not entirely sure which end is which but at least on this end we have a nice grille which has a bit of a mesh behind it which I'm guessing is an etched part. You only get that on this end though as you can see on the other you still get the moulding but no mesh but as far as I know that may be prototypical so it's not a criticism more a observation. Uh, we also have what I think is another kind of Sentinel logo go right in the middle of the grill as well as some lights um, as you can see they're just painted on but I don't think any of us were really expecting them to work. We do get nice big industrial size buffers which are cool but they aren't sprung uh, which isn't a surprise really as none of Hornby's small locos actually have sprung buffers as far as I know. Uh, you can see there's a cutout in the buffer beam to make space for the couplings but in the detail bag Hornby do supply a couple of blanking plates which you can use to fill that gap if you're not keen on having the tension locks protruding from the front of the loco so that's a nice little touch. Another feature I do like of this model is the coupling rods. Now this is the outside cranked version and I just love the look of this area and I'm sure they'll look even better when they're in motion too. Earlier on I said the model is a little bit flimsy in places, but actually one area where I'm proved completely wrong is these handrails. Now being so thin you'd expect them to be incredibly delicate, but actually they're really strong and sturdy, which I have to say was a nice surprise. We also have separately fitted windscreen wipers, which is a nice little touch too, but aside from that the rest of the detail is all moulded on. Uh, finally, it's pretty difficult to see inside the cab, but we do have a little bit of detail in there. From what I can see it's fairly basic, but it's nice that it's not just been left as a blank space. Anyway, that's enough on how the loco looks, but how well does the Sentinel run? And I've got it up on the rolling road, and I'm just turning the power up now. And uh, you can see that it does do a nice crawl and slow speed, although I do have to admit it didn't do this when I first got it. Now, the slow speed was always fairly good, but it was a bit inconsistent. And when I opened it up, I did notice that there was a lot of excess grease all over the gears and on the wheels as well, which I don't think was helping the pickups much. After I cleaned a lot of that out, it runs a lot better, but it's something to be aware of if you get one of these yourself. Anyway, as you can see, it's running quite happily on the rolling road and at a much higher speed than it would have ever achieved in real life. But let's just slow it down now and we'll try it in reverse. And um, yeah, again, you can see that it will do this slow speed in reverse, but do be aware that the slower you run it, the more likely it will be to cut out. So it doesn't seem to have that same um, magic like the Rustin and the Peckets where they can just glide over insole frog points and dead sections regardless of their short wheelbase. That said though, it is a nice smooth runner, pretty much silent, and I think it's certainly capable of doing what most people need it to do on their layouts. Speaking of which, let's get it off the rolling road and down onto my shunting layout, Pickwick Yard.
So here's the Sentinel doing a fine job on Pickwick Yard, um, but I'll be honest, it's a little bit difficult to draw a firm conclusion on this one. Is it up to the same standard as Hornby's other small locos like the Ruston and the Peckets? Um, no, not in my opinion. But then you do have to remember that the Sentinel was released much, much earlier, and it could be argued that Hornby learned a lot by making this model, which they then took forward and improved when making the Peckett and then the Ruston. That said, I certainly don't think the Sentinel is a bad loco, and it doesn't look out of place at all running alongside the newer locos. While it appears fairly basic at first glance, the more you look at it, the more little details seem to just jump out at you. I think in reality the prototype itself was probably fairly simple, and so Hornby have tried to recreate that, adding the little details where they can. Uh, I think for me the only improvement would be the slow speed running, as I do find this stalls more often than my other small industrial locos. All in all though, if you have an industrial layout and you're looking for a small diesel to add to your collection, well, then I think the Sentinel is definitely one to consider, especially as, now that they're a few years old, the prices on these seem to have dropped quite a bit. Anyway, that's going to be it for this review, but do let me know in the comments what you think of the Hornby Sentinel. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get notifications when I release new videos. But that's all for now, folks, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!